Hey guys, welcome to the weekly overview for the week between April the 1st and April the 7th. Here uh, you can find the planet positions. So these are the planets, here are the exact degrees and the signs therein. In this table you can find for each day uh, the planets in the different elements. So uh, this column is about the fire element, this is the air, water and earth element. In dynamics, I can I will move uh, here the date. So here you can find the exact day. So now we are on the first of April, and we are mostly analyzing the planets in the signs and the aspects between the planets. The houses are not relevant with this forecast, so please don't pay attention on that. And what do we have? So during the whole week, the transit sun is in Aries. So, more or less, the most important topic is about taking actions. Being really initiative, being brave, being more concentrated on um, some kind of, you know, events which are um, more related with outer circumstances. This is a very extroverted sign areas. So, that's mostly about taking actions. During the whole week, we have also Mercury in Taurus. Mercury has just entered Taurus and will stay there uh, during the whole week. So, it means Mercury is related with our mental activity, with um, our communication, with, um, you know, making the small steps in order to achieve something. So, with Mercury in Taurus, more or less we need to be patient. Uh, Previously, uh, during the past week, we had uh, Mercury in areas with the sun there, with Uranus. So, you might have felt really impatient to do something and you might have felt like a really strong impulse, um, which has made you feel a little bit nervous and, um, you know, really impatient. But now when we have Mercury in Taurus, which is during the whole week, we need to calm down a little bit. We need to be more relaxed and to give us uh, to give ourselves more time. You know, all kind of ideas that you might have will require more time to put uh, them in action because you know Taurus is the most uh, you know fixed and slow sign. It is both yes fixed and earth. So it means that. Things require more time. It's not like an impulsive, uh, taking impulsive decisions and, you know, trying to uh, put your ideas into action immediately. Instead, it would be better to, you know, give yourself more time to think about the situation, to think about the steps that you would like to take, and after that, to take the concrete actions. And when we talk about actions, we need to also pay attention on Mars, and Mars is in Taurus as well, which means that, you know, Mars is ruling the opposite sign. Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. So in Taurus, Mars is not in a favorable position. And it means that um, we need to find a way, you know, to, uh, to control all of this Mars energy. We shouldn't force ourselves. We shouldn't hurry too much. Everything should be, you know, analyzed from a practical point of view with Mercury in Taurus and your actions should also be more oriented on practical things and uh, give yourself enough time to do that. You know, don't push yourself, don't push people around you because mm, this is not the best strategy. Of course, with the sun in areas, we may feel like a little contradiction. We may want, you know, to do everything really fast, to have really fast results, but mm, try to find the balance. That's the most important. So, uh, another interesting event, the transit Venus. As we know, Venus is still retrograde and it will be during the whole week. But Venus will change the sign. So, uh, until now, Venus was moving in areas retrograde and on the second around the evening actually uh, on the 2nd of April so that's on Sunday the transit Venus will move to Pisces so that's a, a quite you know a big difference because um, here you will see so here we have Venus going back to Pisces so 
Venus in Aries is related with, you know, more explosive emotions, more sometimes even dramatic emotions, more, you know, people tend to um, tend to be more extroverted when Venus is in uh, Aries. But now, when we have a Venus in Pisces, actually the emotional atmosphere should change. Um, people should become more, you know, introverted. Emotionally, they may keep their, you know, feelings for themselves. Uh, and we should also pay attention that Venus in Aries is in a weak position because Venus rules the opposite sign, Libra. But now when it moves to Pisces, it's actually in an exalted position, which makes it very strong. So the emotional atmosphere should become more harmonized. People should become, you know, more sensitive, definitely more sensitive, more compassionate, more willing, you know, to help others, to uh, to feel connected with others. Venus in Pisces is related with this desire, you know, to feel uh, as one with other people. And also when we have Venus entering Pisces on the same day, so that's on Sunday, we have the transit moon in Cancer and it will stay there for around two days. Let's find out exactly how much. So, so yes, uh, even until the fourth um, part of the day, until the fourth, the transit moon is in Cancer. And when the transit moon is in Cancer, usually this is a time when we are much more sensitive, we are more emotional. Um, for some people who are you know, generally more unstable emotionally. This is the time when they can cry more. They might get insulted easily. Uh, at the same time, uh, these days are great for spending more time with your family, uh, for spending more time with your children, staying at home. Usually people prefer and, you know, feel more relaxed to stay at home, to be engaged with some kind of, you know, home activities or with your family while the uh, transit moon is in cancer so uh, we have that just let's uh, repeat it so on the second which is sunday uh, monday and even on tuesday and tuesday until the afternoon let's say so during this time it would be better to plan some kind of you know family activities and after that, so on the 4th, on Tuesday, in the evening, the transit moon will enter uh, Leo and will stay there for around two days. And uh, this is the time actually when um, people enjoy more, you know, uh, they enjoy more uh, some kind of parties, they uh, some kind of entertainment. This is a great time if you're planning some kind of, you know, family uh, event with lots of people or if you're planning something that you would like, you know, people to notice you. Like, for example, for artists, for people with some kind of creative um, uh, careers, uh, the transit moon in uh, Leo is uh, really supportive. Also for entertainment, for love. Generally, people feel more optimistic when we have uh, the transit moon in Leo. That's one of the most um, positive transits. And what do we have? So on the 7th, which is Friday, we have the transit moon in Virgo. So on Friday, the situation, the atmosphere will probably change. Uh, when the moon is in Virgo, Mm, people are more focused on, you know, some kind of practical tasks, some kind of responsibilities. So if the previous days were more about entertainment, hobbies, you know, just having fun, uh, on Friday, you should pay more attention on your responsibilities, on your work. Mm, and that's a great day actually to, you know, uh, some kind of intellectual work, some kind of... Um, you know, working with information because on the same day, so on Friday, we have also uh, trine between the transit moon and Mercury. Here you can see it. 
And that's a very supportive transit uh, combination. The moon in Virgo making positive aspect with the ruler of the sign. So it suggests that these activities which are related with Virgo should be, you know, really successful for you. It should be, you know, things should happen easily uh, and the results should be positive for you. So everything which includes, you know, responsibilities, also uh, paying attention on your health, for example, some kind of therapies, they should be successful during this day. Uh, another interesting uh, thing that we should pay attention on. So just uh, to finish with the moon uh, on the first, on the first, and let's say until lunchtime on uh, on second. So on Saturday and until the lunchtime on Sunday, the transit moon is in. Uh, Gemini, which means that that's a great time for, for example, to read something or for people who are writing something or if you need to travel somewhere. And uh, generally, that's a very supportive transit, you know, just to be more communicative with others. Usually people, you know, get in touch easily with others and they find, you know, topics to talk about. So, uh, if you need to go out somewhere or you want to spend time with your friends or you want to be focused on something, you know, related with writing or with learning, the transit moon in um, Gemini will be very supportive for you. So Saturday and until lunchtime on Sunday is great. Um, and at the same time on Sunday, so around the morning we have opposition between the transit moon and saturn and that's a challenging aspect which suggests that there might be you know, some kind of restrictions uh, we may want to do something but um, instead we may need to take care of some kind of responsibilities so just be aware of that aspect and another thing which i find is really interesting and important is from so let's see so from the third until the sixth and this interesting event is actually that uh, we have a closed configuration between Pluto Mars and Jupiter this is called a uh, synthetic triangle because, you know, the aspects are different between the three planets. So between Pluto and Jupiter, we have a square. And this is a transit which lasts for, you know, a long time. And um, so that's mostly related with some kind of, you know, psychological processes or even if they're, you know, real events in your life, they're more like a process that you're going through. And... That's a quite interesting combination because Jupiter is related with what we are growing, what we are developing, what we are trying, you know, to expand in our life with some kind of, you know, things that we uh, find uh, successful for us. And Pluto, when it makes challenging aspects, like in this case, is related with um, destroying something, with, you know, um, leaving something which is no longer helpful for you. So, in my opinion, this transit, the combination, the square between Pluto and Jupiter is related with um, destroying the things that didn't turn to be successful for you. So, if you have started something that you have put a lot of efforts in, but it doesn't, you know, it, it didn't turn to be so uh, successful for you, it didn't brought you the, the desired uh, results, now you can realize that, which I already said is a process, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen immediately, but now you can realize that and you can destroy what's no longer uh, useful for you. So with Pluto there, that's a time for transformations. Transformations of the things that didn't bring you success. And sometimes these processes might be a little bit painful, might be difficult, but that's just something that we need to go through. And Mars, Mars makes interesting aspects. So Mars makes trine with Pluto. That's a very, uh, you know, positive aspect because 
uh, these planets are usually, you know, very supportive to each other. They are similar as energy. They're both ruling uh, Scorpio and Aries. So, especially when they're connected uh, with the positive aspect, like the trine, that's a very harmonious combination. And it can provide us, you know, it can uh, bring more confidence to us, confidence in our actions. Mm, you know, you can be, you know, take the decision to do something and nothing can stop you from that. So, that Pluto brings a lot of power to Mars, definitely. That's a time to be, you know, really tough about your decisions, to follow what you would like to do, what you would like to achieve. And Mars makes uh, Queen Kong with Jupiter, so this is um, 150 degrees. That's one of the more interesting aspects, because... It consists of two parts, a square and a sextile, 90 degrees plus 60 degrees. So the first part is related with um, the square brings, you know, some kind of difficulties, some kind of challenges. And after we overcome them, then comes the positive uh, results, which are related with the sextile, the 60 degrees. So in my opinion, this can be related with overcoming some kind of difficulties. Probably things won't be so smooth, won't be so easy for us. But the final results can bring success and can be related with expanding something, with achieving some kind of, you know, really important goals that you might have. So uh, that's a pretty interesting uh, aspect uh, combination. Uh, Pluto and Mars are the planets of you know actions, the planet of the planets of force, which can provide uh, literally physical uh, power. And Jupiter is a planet that expands everything, that you know grows it, makes it in a bigger scale. And on the other hand, it's related with success, with um, our you know. Uh, our perspective about success, what, uh, what, um, how you present yourself as uh, being successful. So, a very interesting uh, aspect combination. Um, probably we are going to feel this, uh, the influence of this combination during the whole week. Uh, but as we said, the aspects are exact. So, from the third which is Monday until Thursday, until the 6th. We have this uh, configuration uh, really exact. So just try to use the positives uh, and do the best that you can. Uh, I believe that these were the most important events. Oh, finally, yeah, I, I almost forgot that we have also the transit Saturn. And the transit Saturn is going retrograde. Uh, just a second to see on the fourth. So we are looking here Saturn when it becomes retrograde there will be an R so It happens here and it's on the sixth so, Which is Thursday. So on Thursday the transit Saturn will become Retrograde and it means that a few days before and after that it is stationary and it increases very much the strength of the planets uh, Sorry of the planet uh, so, the most important is actually to uh, analyze if you have planets or cusps of houses which are close uh, to this degree. So, uh, Saturn is stationary on the 28th degree in Sagittarius. So, everyone who has a planet or cusp of a house uh, which is really close to the 28th degree in Sagittarius, 28th degree in uh, Gemini, uh, Pisces and Virgo, so actually these are the mutable signs. Um, this should be a really important week for you, really important time, mostly related with some kind of um, responsibilities probably or some kind of challenges for you, some kind of restrictions are possible. And the most important is actually to be patient, um, to put the efforts in the things that you really have to do and um, to be persistent, patient and, um, you know, the positive side of Saturn is that it's related with justice. So if you have put a lot of efforts in something, you are definitely going to be rewarded for that. So I believe that these were the most important uh, indications during the week. Thank you very much for listening and I will wait for you next week again.